In today's video, I'm going to show you an easy technique for adding light rays to an image using Photoshop. I'm starting with this woodland scene that I shot a few years ago. There's already a fair bit of mist in the scene, as well as a bright area of light. Now these are the perfect conditions to produce believable light rays in an image. The tool I'll be using to draw my light rays on this image is the basic line tool. After selecting the line tool from the Photoshop Tools palette, I'll set the weight of the line to around 80 pixels. I'll then draw several white lines onto the image. As I do this, I'm careful to make them converge on a single point. It's these lines that will create the individual light rays. Notice that each time I draw a new line, Photoshop adds it as a new layer. When I've drawn several lines, I'll select each of these layers by clicking them with my mouse whilst holding down the Shift key. I can then merge the layers together by pressing Command and E on my keyboard. If you're using a Windows PC, that's Control and E. Now I'm going to select the background layer by clicking on it in the Layers window. The reason I'm doing this is that I want to change the weight of the line tool without affecting any of the lines that I've already drawn. This time I'm going to draw the lines with a thickness of around 50 pixels. You may need to experiment with different line thicknesses when you come to do this, as it does depend on the size of the image. As before, I'm drawing all the lines as if they're coming from a single light source. When I've finished drawing, I can select the layers again and merge them by pressing Command and E on my keyboard. I'll then click on the background layer again so I can change the weight of the lines to be 25 pixels. Now I can draw several thinner lines onto the image. Remember, light rays in nature are never a consistent thickness, so you need to keep varying the width of the lines that you draw. Finally, I'll merge all the line layers by selecting them and then pressing Command and E. I'll leave it there for this example, but when you come to do this, you may want to consider adding more and thinner lines to the image. Next, I need to use the Move tool from the Tools palette to centre the lines on the image. What I'm trying to do is move the point where the lines meet to be over the centre of the image. That's because we're going to use a filter to blur these lines and it works from the centre point in the image. To help me find the centre, I'll add two guidelines to the image. I'll just turn off the layer containing the lines whilst I add the new guides from the view menu. The first guide will be a vertical guide and I'll drag it over with my mouse to the centre of the image. You'll know when you get to the centre point of the image because the guide just seems to snap into position. Next I'll add a second guide, but this time I'll make it horizontal. Then I can drag it down the image until it snaps onto the centre. I now know where the centre of the image is, so I can make the lines layer visible and drag it into position. Now it's time to apply the blur filter to this layer to produce the light rays. But before I do that, I want to convert the layer to use smart filters. This means that if the filter settings don't work, I can continue to adjust them. When the layer is being converted to a smart object, I can apply the radial blur filter to it from the filter menu. I'm going to start by trying a value of around 20, and I want to use the spin blur method. This seems to have produced a reasonable effect, but if it didn't, I can still double click on the filter on the smart object to change to another value. You should now be able to see that this is creating lines that look a bit like light rays. Let's clear the guides now by clicking View and then Clear Guides in the menu. I can now use the Move tool to click and drag the light rays back into position. The next step is to add a mask to the layer so that I can blend the light rays into the image. With the layer selected in the Layers window, I'll click the icon to add a new layer mask at the bottom of the window. I can then paint using black and a soft brush onto the mask to hide any areas that I don't want to see. The light rays now look quite convincing, but you may find changing the layer blend mode to screen improves them. You might also want to experiment with changing the opacity of the layer to make the light rays appear more natural. Now because this is a smart object, it does have some limitations. If I want to resize or rotate the light rays, I first need to rasterize the layer. This converts it from a smart object into a pixel layer that I can then manipulate. You can do this by right clicking on the layer in the Layers window, and then selecting Rasterize Layer in the pop-up menu. After that, I can resize the layer as well as rotate it to improve the direction of the light rays. Despite this minor limitation, the Smart Object feature can be incredibly useful for photo editing, as I demonstrate in this next video. 
Thanks for watching today. I hope you've found this video helpful. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you soon for another video.